Hello everyone and welcome to Fire Fridays. My name is Sergio Rodriguez and I am the small group slash discipleship chaplain here on campus. Uh, I want to go ahead and just start us off with a quick word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for allowing us to be here and thank you Lord for your love that endures forever. Lord, I just pray that the word that you've given me may speak to those who are going to tune in. God, I pray that you may use me as a vessel, God, to just deliver your words and not mine. I pray for everyone's life, God. I pray that you bless them, that you continue to fill them, and that you guide them, God. I pray that you walk with each and every one of them, regardless of what stage in their faith or in their life or walk with you that they may be, God. It's in your mighty name that we pray. Amen. So I want to go ahead and start us off with a quick word. We're going to go ahead and read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. And it says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, the word I felt the Lord speaking to me to speak to each and every one of you is that God wants you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to be with you. Sure, He wants your talents and He wants your gifts, but He's the one who gave you that. Sure, He wants what you can bring to the table, what you can bring to his kingdom, what you can bring to the church and how you can bring people to him being that light. But what he wants above all things is to be with you, to be in a relationship with you, a relationship where he can speak to you, you can speak to him, where you can hear him and he can hear you. Now there's going to be moments in this relationship where you may not hear from God. And I want to just encourage you in knowing that that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to feel as if God may not be near. Sometimes God is silent so that we can go from believing in God to believing God. Because when we believe in God, we trust Him so long as He re meets our expectations, so long as He reaches our desires, as He brings our desires, and as He provides for us, as He helps us, all these positive, amazing, beautiful things that, yes, God can do, but when he fails, we seem to fall into this spiral of, God, where are you? God, why have you abandoned me? God, was it ever even true? God, do you really still love me? God, even though I failed, do you still love me? Is it, how is that even possible that you could love someone who has failed so many times, countlessly, over and over again? And it may even be with the same sin. And then God is telling you, of course, I love you. And you may be asking yourself, well, is it wrong for me to have these feelings? Is it, is it bad to have these doubts? Is it wrong for me to have the emotions of sadness and, and some anxiety here and there and all these different things, these stresses, these emotions? Is it wrong for me to have them? And I want to tell you, no. God can use these emotions. God can bring purpose from these emotions. If not, let's look at Jesus' life. Jesus wept. Jesus was filled with pain and agony when his friend Lazarus died. When he was on the cross, he said, Father, why have you abandoned me? He was in so much despair and so much human pain. He was carrying so much of our own sin on him that he felt as if he could no longer see the Father. It is for that reason that Jesus died. Us. It is for that reason that Jesus came to earth and became a man so that he could feel what we feel, so that he may know the things that we know, see it the way we see it, and thereby be a little bit more available to us and help us know that he is more available to us. You see, because in Genesis 1, it says we were created in God's image and likeness. We were created to be with God forever to be in eternal glory with Him. But then Adam and Eve, they failed. They sinned, just as we do each and every day. That's Genesis 3. 
So Jesus came to restore us back to Genesis 1 where we could be in his image and likeness once more. But in order to do that, we need to live out our days, as it says here, being that light. Being that light isn't preaching. It's not teaching. Sure, that, that's a part of it. Reaching out to people and telling people about the goodness and greatness of God. That's a part of it. But the even bigger part of it is when you can live it out. When people can look at you and say, what's so different about so-and-so? That they could be going through the worst of times, but I see them keep pushing forward. What can be so different about so-and-so that when things don't make sense, they're still standing strong and firm? What can be so different about so-and-so that even when they are down in the dumps and they're in the mud and, and they don't feel like there's any way out, their head is still lifted up on high? Only God can do that. Only God can bring that hope and peace in the midst of the storm. If not, let's look at Jesus in the storm with the disciples. All the disciples are like, Jesus, where are you? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing falling asleep? Like this storm, we're going to die. We're all, all this chaos is going on. And Jesus is sleeping. Jesus comes out and he calms the storm. Now, could we have enough faith and trust in God that we can go from believing in him which is where the disciples were at, that they could believe in him when he was doing miracles and he was there present, but then he was suddenly gone or they felt that his, they felt his absence and they were no longer truly believing in him. No longer truly believing the words he said. But God is inviting us to believe him, that when he says that his presence will bring us peace, that it will bring us peace even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment. That when he says that he loves us with a love that goes beyond understanding, that even when we fail, He still loves us. You see, God loves you so much that He was willing to step down from His throne, walk among us, have the same struggles we have, be persecuted, looked down upon because of His social status, looked down upon because of the career he had, looked down upon because of his background. Be a disappointment to the Jewish people who thought, there's no way this man is the Messiah because our expectations of a Messiah is someone who's going to save us from the Roman Empire right now. We need a right now, God. We need a, a fix us from this terrible, dark world right now, God. And Jesus was like, no. The kingdom of God is now and not yet. You see, because the kingdom of God is in each and every one of you. When you believe in him, when you believe in him, you're able to experience this peace. You're able to experience this love. But I can't come back until we tell everyone of this goodness. I can't come back, Jesus says, until this world, until this world knows. This is why you are called to be a light. To be able to bring hope to others who may find themselves in the situation you found yourself in. There was a point in my life where I believed in God. But when things started going wrong, when things didn't go the way I believed them to be, when the world seemed to be throwing everything it had on me, I said, Lord, how can I continue to believe and trust in you when you have left me apart? Where have you gone, God? Where are you that I can't feel you or see you? To such a point that I got to a point of depression. I got to the darkest point in my life. A point where everything seemed hopeless, where even the promises that God had given me were not enough to give me light. And I realize now, Promises, all these words, these beautiful, encouraging words, all of it will mean nothing if I don't go from believing in God to believing God. You see, because when I believe God, those words now have power in my life. When he says I am called, when he says I am the light of this world, when he says that I am his child, no matter what comes in the way, I am and forever will be. The light. I am and forever will be his child. Even when I fail, when I come back to him and repent and, and I say, God, how could I do that again? God, the world is one again, but I just want to come back to you. 
God, even though I don't feel you, hear you, or see you, I'm going to take this next step as you commanded. That is when I go into believing God. When I believe God, my life changes from going from miracle to miracle to just believing that if he said it, he'll do it. From going from encouraging word to encouraging word to encouraging word to believing that as God is on my side, there is no one who can come against me. To believing that the God who loved me continues to love me even now. That even if he's not giving me the guidance for the next steps, I know that he's going to work it out for good. Because God doesn't bring bad things. Bad things are a product of our sin. But when we walk alongside God, when we believe God, God says, hey, that bad thing, bring it to me and see how I bring purpose from it. Oh, you failed? Bring that to me and let me show you how we can avoid this next time. You see, because God brings love and a lesson, but the enemy brings shame. Shame doesn't help you and it doesn't fix you. It holds you back and it ties you down. Love from God will help you to continue to grow. So I want to tell you, God wants you. God wants to spend time with you. He wants to get to know you. He wants you to be loved by him. Because you may be asking yourself, how could I ever be a light when I feel in so much darkness? Jesus is saying, come to me. Come to me. Let me love you so that you can love yourself. Because we often think that we're loving ourselves, doing all these amazing and great things for God, doing all these amazing and great things that bring us happiness. And God's like, wait, sure, you can be happy for the moment. But when hard things come, you always get anxious or you worry. Why? Because that's world happiness. That's temporary. Let me bring you to joy. The joy in knowing that no matter what happens, God still loves you. You want to know what it means to be loved? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, so that all who believe shall not perish but have eternal life. He died for you. That self-sacrificial love. A love that doesn't make sense. Because when we fail people, they're hurt and they grow a little distant. If I'm hurt by someone, I grow a little distant, being honest, right? But when we hurt God, when we fail, he's like, come to me. Let's work on this together. Let's walk together. Let's see what we did wrong. And let's continue to grow. Let's just continue to move forward. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, worry not about tomorrow for tomorrow has its own problems. 6, 34, seek first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added to you. I might have flipped those two, but it's in there somewhere. It's Matthew 6, 33, 34. Those are the verses. See, when you seek God first, when you seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, it says all things will be added to you. What God is saying is, Trust me and everything else will come afterwards. Let me love you and everything else will come afterwards. You want to have that self-love that this world is trying so desperately to go after? Let him love you first so that you know what love is. Because we don't know love until we have God. We don't know love until we are loved. We have to be loved by God first to love. You want to be that difference and that light in the world after loving yourself? You, it's not going to be your love. It's not going to be your light. It's going to be God's light and God's love. Because only God's love can transform. Only God's love can change something messy into something prosperous. Only God's love can change something terrible into something beautiful. So I want to invite you. To bring it all to God today. To bring your life before Him as it is. And put it in His hands. You see, we often make this, this excuse of, Oh no, when I get my life right, when I stop sinning, when I stop this, when I blah, 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 blah. All these, when I do this, 
then I'll serve God. Then I'll seek God. Then I'll go to church. Then I'll believe in Him. Then I'll have faith. Then I'll give Him a chance. No. God wants you the way you are right now. He wants you with all your baggage. That's the difference between God's love and the world's love. Because when people want to love on you, they expect you to leave your baggage at the door. It's very rare for people to accept you as you are. But God is coming to you and he's saying, I don't just accept you as you are. Bring your failures, bring your flaws, put it all on the table. And let's work through this mess together. You see, because I've already paid for this mess. This mess is now cleansed. If you would only love me, if you would only choose to be loved by me, if you would only choose to believe me when I tell you your life is paid for. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to allow God to move in your life? What are you waiting for to see the difference that God can bring in your life, your family's life, your friend's life, your future? Have you tried everything yet? Have you tried all these different things that the world offers to try and fix problems, to try and be a better you? Because if you have and you're tired of seeking and looking for things, here's Jesus and he's ready to take you in. He always has been. He's been waiting with his arms wide open for you to come and experience what true love is like. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, thank you for choosing us the way we are. Thank you for loving on us despite our failures and despite all of our wrongdoings. Thank you, God, because even in our worst of days, you bring the best of your love. Because even in the worst of our failures, you bring the most of your warmth, loving kindness. Thank you, God, because even when we don't deserve it, and even though we don't deserve it, you still seek after us and love on us. God, regardless of whatever stage we are in our life, God, I just pray that you walk with each and every one of us that we may be that light everywhere we go, that we may be that living testimony for this world, God. In this world filled with so much darkness and pain, God, that we may bring your love and your joy, which is the only solution to this messed up world, God. I pray that even when our future doesn't make sense, God, that you, Lord God, may guide our steps. That although we may want the whole thing all at once, God, that we may be able to Believe you when you say that you have it all in your hands and take just a step at a time in faith, God. It's in your mighty and amazing name that we pray. Amen. I hope you guys all have a blessed weekend, blessed rest of your week, wherever you are in your walk with God. I just pray that he meets you there and that you're open enough to meet him there. God bless you.